If you or someone you love has ever gone through chemotherapy, you know how brutal it can be. The drugs attack both cancer cells and healthy ones too, leaving patients sick, weak, and exhausted. Or think about a stroke. Every minute a blood clot blocks blood flow, brain cells are dying. At the same time, treatments are often too slow or too risky. The problem is the same in both cases. Our best tools treat the whole body when we need to target a single problem area. That's why scientists are racing to build tiny robots that are small enough to swim through your bloodstream and deliver medicine exactly where it's needed. No flooding your whole body, no unnecessary damage, just precision treatment. They sound like something out of a science fiction story, but these medical robots are real. We're talking about robots with four-fingered hands made entirely from DNA that can grab onto viruses. Microscopic all-trained vehicles that navigate brain tissue. And the strangest of all, robots that aren't built, but grown. The question is, how close are we to seeing them change medicine? I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. This video is brought to you by Surfshark. First, let's get our bearings. What exactly is a microbot? This is a microbot. Well, these robots range from about one micron, which is about one hundredth of the width of a human hair, up to a few millimeters. If they're smaller than a micron, they're called nanorobots. And unlike typical robots with wheels or screens, medical microbots are controlled by magnetic fields. Magnets don't interfere with our tissues, and tissues don't interfere with the magnetic signals. Here's why this matters. Current medicine often treats your whole body when the problem is in one specific place. Chemotherapy floods your bloodstream with drugs that attack healthy cells along with cancer cells, causing devastating side effects. Blood clots in delicate areas like the spinal cord are dangerous to treat surgically because one mistake can be life-altering. Microbots promise precision. Instead of carpet bombing your whole system, imagine tiny robots swimming directly to a tumor to deliver drugs, or navigating to a blood clot to release dissolving agents where it's needed exactly. The challenge is that our bodies aren't made of robot-friendly terrain. They're full of gooey, <laughs> twisting tubes and uneven surfaces that are surprisingly hard to navigate. So how do you build a robot that can navigate the labyrinth inside your body? Well, different teams have different approaches, but they're all tackling the same basic challenge, getting from the injection site to the problem area. Meet Purdue University's Maniacs, or Magnetically Aligned Nanorods and Alginate Capsules. <laughs> it's my favorite acronym of all time. Now, these are essentially tiny all-terrain vehicles for your bloodstream. They may not be animated, but the way they work is pretty zany. Each Maniac is a bundle of magnetically aligned nickel nanorods, housed within a soft ball of alginate. Alginate is derived from seaweed or bacteria and is pretty common in the medical and cosmetic industries because of several properties. I actually have a recent video on how the Caribbean is turning an invasive species of seaweed into something very useful. Anyway, alginate is easy to make, it's non-toxic, your body doesn't treat it as a foreign invader, and your kidneys have no issue cleaning it out. What makes Maniacs special is that they're great at tackling organic tissue. As the research team points out, a lot of medical robot research up to this point has dealt with walking across basic hard surfaces or swimming through fluids. However, the body is full of weird and wonderful places, and our tissues are irregular, curved, and slippery. Those just so happen to be the exact opposite conditions that robots typically need to traverse freely. But just like in a Jeep scaling a steep hill or fording a river, these bots' squishy alginate casing allows them to climb slopes as steep as 45 degrees and move upstream against the kinds of fluid flows. In testing, the magnetic control systems gave the Purdue team enough fine motor control to guide the maniacs to specific locations in rat brain tissues to drop their dye payloads with pinpoint accuracy. The team even showcased how they could circle back and redose the same locations. The University of Saskatchewan took a different approach. Instead of making a simple rod and encasing it in alginate to make a ball, their researchers went for a stranger, more biologically inspired shape, the corkscrew. As project lead professor Chris Zhang explained in late 2024, the existing model for these robots doesn't take into account the property as well as the movement behavior of blood in the human body. In other words, your blood is constantly on the go, and that means we need nanobots that can swim upstream and get to the problem areas without your circulatory system washing them straight past the problem zone. The corkscrew shape makes a lot more sense when you consider that many bacteria are spiral-shaped or wave their little flagella in a spiral pattern to swim. If you're going to steal, steal from the best, right? I mean, after all, nature has already put billions of years of R&D time under real-world stress test conditions. While research is still in early phases, the team was able to fabricate their prototype via 3D printing. That's pretty promising when you recall how difficult it is to manufacture anything at nanoscale, especially a shape as complex as a corkscrew. But navigation is just one part of the microbot puzzle. 
Some of these tiny robots aren't just trying to get somewhere, they're going on the defensive, literally grabbing onto threats with tiny robotic hands made from DNA. And speaking of defense, let me tell you about defending your online privacy with today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. I was recently traveling to energy conferences and between airport Wi-Fi and hotel connections, I leaned heavily on Surfshark VPN to keep my browsing secure and private. I've been using Surfshark for what feels like forever and get so much use out of it. Surfshark is a fast, easy to use VPN full of incredible features that you can install on an unlimited number of devices with one account. But that's not all. Even shopping services will sometimes gate prices based on your location. So you can change your location to make sure you're getting the best deal. They also have add-ons to their VPN service to unlock things like Surfshark Alert, which will let you know if your email or personal details, like passwords, have been leaked in online data breaches. Right now, they're running a special deal. Go to surfshark.com slash undecided and use the code undecided at checkout to get four extra months of Surfshark VPN. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's absolutely no risk to try it out for yourself. I've been using Surfshark for years, and I love it. Don't miss out on this great deal. The link's in the description below, and thanks to Surfshark and to all of you for supporting the channel. So let me show you some of these defensive microbots in action. These kinds of microbots are designed to go on the offensive with drug delivery, but not every bot is built the same way. Some play defense instead, literally grabbing onto threats before they can cause damage. This tiny robotic hand is the Nano Gripper, designed by the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Its job? It's basically a viral goalie. But a quick virology lesson. Viruses typically reproduce by coming into contact with a host's cell. If the virus's spike proteins match up with the cell's receptors, they stick together. It's kind of like Velcro. From there, it's pretty much what you see in the sci-fi thrillers. The viruses get inside the cell and hijack it, making the cell produce more and more viruses until the cell bursts open and the little invaders drift off, ready to infect more cells. But if the viruses don't make contact, then the horror show doesn't happen. The Nano Gripper has four fingers, each with three joints. This allows it to nimbly grab viruses and prevent them from attaching to cells. But here's the strangest part. This Nano Gripper isn't made from metal or 3D printed materials. It's made from DNA folded into a robotic shape. As development leader Zing Wang puts it, we wanted to make a soft material nanoscale robot with grabbing functions that never have been seen before to interact with cells, viruses, and other molecules for biomedical applications. We are using DNA for its structural properties. It is strong, flexible, and programmable. The fact that the Nano Gripper's fingers are made of DNA means that they can be equipped with DNA aptamers. These act as targetable locks, binding to specific virus's spike proteins and holding them in place. This binding eliminates the virus's ability to infect cells and triggers the kung fu-like grip of the fingers, preventing the viruses from escaping. Researchers have combined their Nano Gripper with a photonic crystal sensor to make a 30-minute, super-accurate COVID-19 test. When you're dealing with highly contagious and life-threatening diseases, having something that can protect while allowing for quick identification is pretty handy. But the world of medical microbots gets even weirder. What about straight up growing a microbot from living tissue? These are anthrobots, and what makes them different from other microbots is simple. They're grown from human tissue, Specifically, they're made from lung epithelium and can be as small as 30 micrometers across and survive for up to two months. This comes from Tufts University biologist Michael Levin, who previously built biobots from skin and heart muscle cells of the African clawed frog. The anthrobots are covered in small, hair-like structures called cilia that they use to swim and crawl through their environments. They can even self-assemble into clusters creating completely new structures. Some anthrobots seem able to kickstart a very basic form of wound healing in layers of human cells. It's not Wolverine-style healing factor, but it certainly warrants further study. However, there's been significant skepticism around the anthrobots. Critics point out that the cells, including human cells, are in fact living things and will naturally move around on their own and clump together. It's what they do. Until we see more concrete control mechanisms or uses, these anthrobots might be more interesting than useful. And that brings us to an important reality check. All of these microbots are still in the very early development stages, we're talking about a three or four at best on NASA's technology readiness level. That's validation in a lab environment. Miniacs are the furthest along. The corkscrew bot only got their prototype last November, the Nano Gripper is still in testing, and the Anthrobots are fresh on the lab bench. Here's where things get real. Developing anything at the nanoscale isn't cheap or easy. Developing medical treatments isn't cheap or easy. Put these together and getting our own tiny robot doctors definitely won't be affordable anytime soon. To put this into perspective, today's precision medicine is already expensive. 
CAR-T cell therapy costs between $373,000 and $475,000 just for the drug, but the total treatment often exceeds $1.5 million per patient when you include hospitalization and managing side effects. The newest CRISPR gene editing treatments cost $2.2 to $3.1 million per patient. Manufacturing medical nanoparticles costs about $80,000 per gram. Meanwhile, it costs $50 to process raw gold. That's a 1,600-fold markup driven entirely by manufacturing complexity. Companies developing medical microbots also face enormous costs before even reaching patients. Bionaut Labs, which is a leading microbot company, has raised over $70 million since 2016 and only began human trials in 2024. Bringing a nano device through clinical development typically requires tens to hundreds of millions of dollars, with large pivotal trials reaching the low hundreds of millions as well. Nanomedicine manufacturing build-outs often demand eight-figure capital investments for specialized clean rooms and equipment. The timeline doesn't look great. The data shows it takes billions of dollars to develop these drugs, and the return on investment keeps dropping. That means prices are going to stay high for a while. We can't expect them to get cheaper every year like smartphones do. Real affordability will only come when we can manufacture at scale and have solid proof that they work. Compare that to other medical breakthroughs. mRNA vaccines cost just 54 cents to 98 cents per dose to manufacture them and move from genetic sequencing to clinical trials in months, not decades. Analyst estimates suggest that AI drug discovery promises 40 to 50% cost reductions with faster timelines. Medical microbots and similar nanotech usually take about a decade to go from lab to patient. When you look at how nanomedicine gets developed, it typically takes 10 to 15 years or more to bring something to market. Patient safety means microbots are going to take a lot more study than other pieces of tech that we usually talk about on the channel. Solar panels and batteries don't usually have to pass clinical trials. And I'm definitely not looking forward to arguing with insurance about tiny robot doctors, especially when they can't advocate for a prior auth on my behalf. Medical microbots represent something remarkable. The possibility of precision medicine that treats exactly what needs treating, nothing more, nothing less. While the technology is still years away from your doctor's office, the potential is undeniable. When this technology arrives, it won't just be a medical breakthrough. It could directly change how we experience treatment for cancer, stroke, infection, and dozens of other conditions. The question isn't whether tiny robots will revolutionize medicine, but how quickly we can make them safe, effective, and affordable. Would you trust tiny robots inside your body if it meant more efficient treatment? That's a choice we might all face sooner than we could imagine. Until then, I'll have to stick to rewatching Fantastic Voyage. But what do you think? Would you trust tiny robots swimming through your bloodstream if it meant beating cancer without chemotherapy side effects? And if you want to see how microbots could cut healthcare costs by over $100 billion annually, check out the extended version on Patreon where we dive into the real-world economics. And a big welcome to new Supporter Plus member, Doug Strain. If you'd like to join, the link's in the description. And be sure to listen to my follow-up podcast, Still To Be Determined, we'll keep this conversation going. Keep your mind open, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.